Here's the brief news from the world over this week. The press is once again turning their attention to Pope Francis and his purported agenda to change the Catholic Church. On Wednesday, the Associated Press titled a story, quote, Pope maps out personal and progressive policy. According to the report, Pope Francis has made the most important policy speeches of his pontificate in recent days. Among them, Pope Francis reiterated the Vatican's strong opposition to capital punishment while speaking to a group of penal lawyers. He also denounced life imprisonment as a hidden death penalty. Prison systems, he said, are, quote, out of control and depriving people of their dignity. He denounced detaining people without charge or conviction and holding inmates in isolation, which the Pope called a form of physical and psychological torture. Pope Francis also reiterated the Church's position on evolution, mainly that, quote, evolution in nature doesn't contradict the notion of creation because evolution presupposes the creation of beings who evolve. This idea has been advanced by his predecessors, St. John Paul, as well as Benedict XVI. During a speech on Tuesday, he promised an encyclical on the environment and lent his support to workers' rights. As he concluded, he mused, if I talk about this, some people will think that the Pope is communist. They don't understand that love for the poor is at the center of the gospel. Less reported this past week was Pope Francis's strong defense of the family. During comments he made Saturday to members of the Schoenstatt movement, the Pope lamented the attacks upon the Christian family and a growing relativism on the, over the concept of marriage. He said, too often there's a misunderstanding over the difference between the sacrament of marriage and the holy, or the, rather the social right. He specifically mentioned, quote, people who just live together, who choose part-time cohabitation. Here are the new forms, totally destructive and limiting the greatness of marriage, end quote. In other news, the insurgency of Boko Haram continues its advance in northeastern Nigeria. The jihadist militants have seized the commercial city of Mubai. This after a fierce gun battle with Nigeria's military, who eventually retreated. The latest Boko Haram victory and escalated attacks come after a highly publicized ceasefire agreement with Nigeria's government two weeks ago. The ceasefire led to hopes that the more than 200 schoolgirls abducted by Boko Haram back in the spring might soon be released. Meanwhile, the kidnappings continue. Seventy young women, teenage girls and boys have been kidnapped in recent days from villages throughout northeast Nigeria. Escapees have told Human Rights Watch that the abducted are raped, forced to marry, and in some cases convert to Islam. USA Today is reporting that the once social conservative bedrock of Latin America is making a quick and stunning turn to the left. Uruguay has led the way in recent years, passing laws legalizing gay marriage and abortion. But they're hardly alone. Despite the region's overwhelmingly Catholic population, gay marriage is now recognized among Uruguay's larger neighbors, Brazil and the Pope's own Argentina. Same-sex civil unions are now legal in Mexico, Costa Rica, Colombia, and Ecuador. Abortion has become legal to some extent in nine Latin American countries. USA Today notes that one-fourth of the nearly half a million green cards issued in the U.S. last year went to people from Latin America, and the vast majority of undocumented immigrants come from the region. Immigration could have profound effects on the political landscape of the United States in the years to come. After creating a First Amendment firestorm, the city of Houston announced on Wednesday that it is backing off its controversial subpoenas of five Christian pastors. Mayor Anise Parker subpoenaed the sermons and other church documents after the city council was sued for passing an anti-discrimination ordinance to protect gay and transgender Houstonians. The pastors were not part of the lawsuit but support a repeal of the ordinance. Parker said that after meeting with religious leaders and listening to their concerns, 
she decided it was best for the city to drop the subpoenas. The tipping point may have been the 1,000 sermons and Bibles she received in the mail from pastors across the U.S. This was orchestrated by former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee on his Fox News program. Meanwhile, religious freedom took a small step forward in Cuba for the first time in the 55-year reign of the Castro brothers, the government is allowing the construction of the country's first new Catholic Church. Much like other communist regimes, the Catholic Church had tense relations with the atheist government for many years after the 1959 revolution. They began to improve ahead of Pope John Paul II's visit in 1998. Small concessions from the government continued through Pope Benedict's 2012 visit. The church will be built in the far western town of Sandino and is being funded by the faithful of St. Lawrence Parish in Tampa, Florida. Currently, the town of 40,000 does not have a place of worship. And some major restructuring is coming to the Archdiocese of New York as Cardinal Timothy Dolan has announced the closure of more than 50 parishes. That is more than one out of every eight parishes in the archdiocese. A closure plan has been in the works since Cardinal Dolan's arrival in New York in 2009. In his weekly archdiocesan column, the Cardinal cited the reality of understaffing and financial stress, writing, we have too many parishes in areas where the Catholic population has shrunk. He noted specifically Manhattan's 88 parishes, many just blocks apart, serve less than 12 percent of New York's Catholics. The pastors and faithful of the parishes to be closed will be informed as soon as this week before the Archdiocese makes a public announcement. And a possible major discovery in the art world, Caravaggio's long-lost painting, Mary Magdalene in Ecstasy, is believed to have been found. Several copies of the painting exist, but the original, which Caravaggio was believed to have been possessing just before he died in 1610, had disappeared. Top Caravaggio scholar Mimi Gregori announced that she's found the painting in a private collection. She said she knew instantly the piece was the missing Caravaggio. A note on the back of the painting says it was commissioned by one of Caravaggio's most important patrons, Roman Cardinal Scipone Borghese. Italian daily La Repubblica was allowed to photograph it in an exclusive, but the owners thus far have indicated no interest in displaying the piece for the public.